so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Really Lovely to see you and what a great location. Yeah. Look at this. I know. This is know. Addis. Top of the city, yeah. Help yourself. Okay, so. Thank you. What is the biggest factor that has helped you to be such a successful lady? I think, yeah, the single most, uh, I think the one factor would be really the way that I was brought up. And, and, and until today, you know, I, I look back and, and, and I thank my parents all the time for, for, for how they brought me up and, you know, making sure we learned how to read and write Amharic back in the days when we thought, you know, why do we need it? And today I'm like writing my own mamelkacha and <laughs> I'm reading my own document. I mean, it takes me forever, Doesn't but matter. I'm doing it so myself you can get it and done. it feels good, you know? So, okay. so yeah, so that's uh, my parents. Yeah, I love my beloved parents. Okay, so now I'm going to be careful. Use a little Take bit anything. of my good luck. <laughs> okay, so there we go. All right. If you could talk to a graduating high school class, what advice would you give them? I would say seize the moment. I think we are living now in Ethiopia at a time when there's going to be huge opportunity. I think the, the whole world is really focusing on Ethiopia and really um, for this young and growing population, I think there's a lot of opportunities and there's so much that they can do. Of course, it's not going to be easy. It's, uh, you know, nothing is easy. I yes. mean, you get out of life what you put into life, but I think if they really kind of, um, find something that they're passionate about and then just stick with it and there is life after 30 there's life after 40 there is you know it life doesn't end at 25 and they should right. like really push and and persevere and I think you know there's a lot of opportunities a lot that we can do so um, just you know find that thing that you really love and don't look for overnight success you know it could take you longer but when it comes it's gonna be sweet <laughs> you know it's gonna it's gonna be great Okay, so let's do this one, my hidden treasure. When you die, mm -hmm. oh, what okay. do you want to be remembered <laughs> for? Oh, my legacy? I guess for changing the lives of, um, of people, having an impact on, on people's lives, I think. Um, obviously, we all know you can't you know, die with all your possessions and whatever money you have and material, etc. But, you know, if you can pass on and help, you know, the next generation or help those in need, if you can help, um, you know, if you can inspire people, I think that's where your legacy will continue. And so okay. um, I would hope like, uh, you know, 100 years from now, people will say, well, you know, there's a couple of things she did in fashion, which was kind of good. And couple of things she did here and there and I think that would I would love for that to be my legacy yeah. another one mm. oh this is you've been given an elephant okay as a gift okay you can't sell it okay or you can't give it away what will you do with it but, well uh, me being a very entrepreneurial I will most probably create a park around it and maybe I don't know um, have people come out, I will train the elephant to, I don't know, do interesting things and charge people at the door to come and look at this really cool oh, elephant and something. I don't know, that's what I'll do. <laughs> if you can have one of the following. A maid. Maid, M-A-I-D, mm -hmm. okay. A personal chef or a nanny. Which one of these three would you choose and why? A maid, uh, but um, I think a helper at home. Because, you know, I'm, I'm always running in and out of the house. And, and I, I, I like to have things organized. So, you know, it's really important to have someone who can kind of help me organize my wardrobe and, you know, things. So I would, I would um, opt for a helper. However, I think, uh, uh, and I am actually okay with cooking. So I can, I can survive okay. with, with, you know. So it's going to be a maid. Huh? Yes. So my last one. If you could trade lives for someone, who would it be and why? I would think Mother Teresa. Oh, that's a good choice. Yeah, I would think so. That's a good choice, Mother Teresa. I mean, I'm far from that. You know, I still like my comfort. I still like my, you know, but I would love to be able to like give everything up and just, you know, commit yourself to that. I mean, what a beautiful life, I didn't know. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know. I would think it just requires commitment. That's all. Yeah, 
I think I'll Tell me something there. about your present job, briefly. Other than money, what in your life inspired you to get started in the venture that you are in right now? Um, I grew up abroad, as you know, and, mm -hmm. and I grew up with my family, especially my father's family. We have this incredible country and, and you know, this culture, this richness, and yet there is this poverty, and yet there's this hardship. And so I always felt, why don't I invest and commit my life to bringing back something here to Ethiopia where I could not only educate the youth, but also be able to build sustainable business. So just actually felt that the world didn't even know what was happening in Africa as around fashion. And the world had this image and this view of Africa from what they saw on obviously the media at that time. You know, I grew up in the entire world, you know, live aid and charity and family. That's all they knew about Africa, didn't they? And yet you true, knew, for true. those of us, whether, you know, our parents, our families were telling us that there's this richness, there's this, you know, diversity, there's this heritage that has, has not yet been, you know, un, that has been that's untapped. And so that really became my mission was I need to build awareness on the, uh, uh, in the West, but at the same time also here on the ground, what an incredible country we have. And, you know, and we don't have to go to Paris or elsewhere to buy fashion and we mm. can buy beautiful fashion right here. So that kind of, it started off with this kind of frustration, but also this need to say, we can make it on our own. We don't have to always be begging for money. Charity, asking support. Let's build viable, you know, sustainable industries that can actually ultimately get us out of this trap that we're in, you know? So that's kind of, that got me on this journey. And yes, yeah, so I've been doing, it's the only thing I really know. I mean, fashion and development, I've been doing it pretty much, you know, straight out of school. And, and I think I'll do it for as long as I live because I, I really love what I do. I, I, I'm very committed. And now I'm right here on the ground. So, you know, I'm, I'm close to where everything is and I can really have more of an impact, you know. And uh, what you're doing is great for Ethiopia. Okay? To Thank give you. up whatever you had and come here. Thank you. And um, participate in the development of this nation. It's remarkable. It's, it's, it's very rewarding Thank you. as well. I Thank wouldn't you. want to be anywhere else. I Thank wouldn't you. want to be doing anything Thank else. You. I appreciate Thank you coming. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you, and all the best of the program. And Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Me. Progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. Wisdom of the day.